It is good to be with you, and uh, we are continuing in our series, 1 Corinthians, and we're going to be reading from chapter 2, and I like preaching after my dad because he's not short like Pastor Hawkins, and he doesn't adjust the pulpit. It seems like the past couple times I've preached on a Sunday night, I have to bend over and put the pegs in, so it's nice to have a pulpit that is the way it was meant to be built, nice and tall, for a tall preacher. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, I am a father of three, and my wife is a mother of four, and as the oldest child in the house, I do my best to help with our younger three um, siblings, and no, that's not like a pregnancy announcement, that's, I'm just claiming myself as a child, Um, and so, Elizabeth, thank you for raising me and doing a great job, Um, and uh, I I love you a lot, and... um, you, you're, you're amazing, and I don't tell you that enough, so I just thought I'd take the opportunity when I had the platform to tell you. Um, so thank you for, for being such a wonderful, wonderful spouse. Our oldest kid is four years old, and if you've ever had a four-year-old, you would know that uh, they ask about four million questions a day, and I love it. And Sam asks all sorts of questions about life, God, and science, and some of them are very difficult to answer, I won't lie. And some of my favorite most recent questions include, Mommy, if the earth is round, then how come the roads are so flat, flat, flat? <laughs> Four years old. Or, or the other day, somehow the conversation of Jesus coming back and, and him restoring the earth came up, and we were trying to explain how Jesus was going to bring in the new heaven and the new earth and, and make all things new, and, and he, he kind of sat there and he thought, and he says, that sounds cool. I'm going to watch him do that through my binoculars. I think that's going to be cool. <laughs> Cool. And my, my personal favorite was when Sam asked Elizabeth and I if we ate Jesus. And, and it took us a moment to kind of realize what he was asking, but we realized, like, man, we talk about Jesus being inside of us all the time, you know, in our hearts. And he's thinking, how on earth does Jesus get inside of us? Do we have to eat him? You know, um, and so just, I, I love that age. And Sam, I know you're probably not listening to me right now, but that's okay. But never stop asking your mommy and daddy questions, and we'll do the best that we can to, uh, to answer those. And if we don't know the answers, then, then um, we'll make something up. And <laughs> I'm just teasing. But I, I think that in many ways, many of us are, are like Sam Lewis, and um, there are things that we just don't understand, and we need to go to a being or a person where we uh, extract wisdom and truth and knowledge that we don't have. And it's, it's, it's not uh, an issue that we are dumb or we are, are stupid, but in, in many things in life, we walk around ignorant. And, and tonight, we are going to be ending with a time of worship and prayer. And we need to seek out the wisdom of the Holy Spirit because He is the one who holds all the answers of life. He is the one who is called the Spirit of Truth, and He reveals all things to us. And tonight, we we need to ask Him that He would open up our eyes and give us discernment and direction. And it's time that we turn up the volume on God's voice, and we turn down the volume on self-help books and, and, and best friend's advice, and, and maybe a mentor's advice. And I'm not saying that we abandon those things. I'm not saying that we abandon teachings or podcasts or preachings, but we need to prioritize and, and keep the main thing the main thing and make sure that God's voice is the one that's dictating every step that you take. Because God cares more about where you are headed than some book or your best friend or your parent or your spouse. He cares and he has the best plan And we need to be connected to his spirit so that we might understand that and follow that. So let's read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You can follow along in the giant Bible on the screen. Or if you brought a print Bible, that's great. We're going to be starting in verse 6. We'll be reading through the end of the chapter. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory to before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. 
For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may, be, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we, may, what, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that you would quicken this word, that you would flow through me, God, that you would open up ears, you'd open up eyes, you'd open up hearts for your spirit of truth to speak into our lives, God. Allow us just to, to be at the center of your will tonight, Lord. We, we lay aside all of our agendas and we just create room for you to speak to us, God, and to reveal to us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So as Pastor Jeff did a wonderful job a, a couple weeks ago laying out the context of, of this book um, a couple weeks ago on Sunday morning, I want to remind you that this, this message was written to the Corinthians, and the Corinthians really valued wisdom. They valued human reasoning and would spend hours a day discussing deep thoughts, and they likely viewed themselves as being wise. And Paul is addressing this mindset that had very likely crept into the church and he reminds them where real wisdom comes. And we didn't read this, but in chapter 1, verse 25, and you can look there, it says, Paul says this, For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. That, that means God's most foolish thoughts is better than anything that you could come up with by yourself. And, and, and then Paul, in, in chapter 2, he's essentially saying that the only way that you can understand the things of God is through the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what opens a person's eyes. And it opens his eyes first to the work of the cross and salvation, and then it opens up the eyes to the believer to the deeper things of God. And the first thing that is important that we remember tonight is that without the Spirit of God opening our eyes, we could not be saved. And I think too often we view our role in, in the part of salvation as being too big, and we like to focus on what we have done. We call upon the name of the Lord. We confess our sins. We are, are, are the ones who ask Jesus to come into our heart. We repent, when in reality we need to remember that without He, we would still be dead in our sin. He opened up our eyes so that we could see our need. He placed a desire in our wicked heart that we might be open to Him. He drew us in a relationship by His love, and He saved us by His grace. He paid for our sin. He made the way. Without the Spirit of God revealing all of that to us, you, myself, anyone we, that calls upon the name of the Lord, we would still be dead in our sin because it's the Spirit that draws a man in. John six forty four says, No man comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him in. Matthew 16, um, verses 16 and 17, Jesus asks his disciples, Who do you say I am? That's a very important question that Pastor Jeff was, was talking about. Who do you say I am? And, and, and Peter uh, replies, and he says this in verse 16, you are the Messiah. And Jesus in verse 17 says, blessed are you, Simon of, of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but it was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. Your salvation is a gift from above. From start to finish, you didn't come to faith through an intellectual conversation. You didn't come to faith um, just through your wisdom because the plan of salvation, uh, Jesus Christ and, and everything, it, it, it doesn't make sense. And, and we can have this, this formula in our mind, but it's not until God's Spirit unlocks it in our hearts that, that our spirit bears witness with that. And, and, and what we know in our head then becomes in our hearts, in our innards. It's by the Spirit that draws us in. Your spirit becomes alive, and it's no longer just an intellectual concept, but it becomes solidified in your heart. When you pray for people that, that aren't yet Christians, this is a great prayer to pray. If you've got loved ones, family members that don't know the Lord, say, God, open up their eyes. 
Because guess what? You can talk to them all day long about science. You can talk to them all day long about major uh, problems and stuff. But it's only until the Spirit makes their life come alive that they will be able to see it. Otherwise, it's like throwing pearls at swine. It's the Spirit that draws it in. It's the Spirit that's doing the work. It's the Spirit that's going before you. You cannot save anybody. Words cannot save anybody. Only Jesus Christ can do that. And we need to remind ourselves daily that it's the Spirit that draws us in. And thank God every day that He gave you the ability to see your need for Jesus Christ. Without God's Spirit unlocking these things in your heart and in your mind, you would still be dead in your sin. Pray for these people and say, God, open their eyes. Break down barriers. Allow your spirit to reveal to them their need for you. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear. And my prayer is that as we pray this over the people in our lives that don't know Christ, that we would start to see dry bones come to life. That we would start to see things that, that the only way that we can explain it is God got a hold of them somehow. I don't know if it was through a dream. I don't know if it was through intellect, but it was God's spirit. Because if you can talk somebody into Christianity, someone else can talk them out of it. We need the Spirit of God to awaken us and to awaken our loved ones and to awaken our neighbors. And if you're not praying that God would open up their eyes, you need to start praying that. Because God hears every prayer and He's working even when we can't see it. The second thing that we need to realize tonight is that without the Spirit of God opening our eyes, we cannot fully understand the Word of God. Verse 10 says that the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things. And in verses 14 and 15 says that the man without the Spirit does not accept the things from God because it takes the Spirit to discern them. This is so crucial to understand that it could revolutionize your Bible study uh, when, you, when you have your devotional time. If you are not starting out your time in the Word of God by saying, God, would you open up my eyes by your Spirit, by your Spirit, the Spirit of truth that brings light to this, God, take this Word and make it living. Illuminate what I am not seeing. If you are not praying that prayer, God, send your spirit into this time. Illuminate this word, your scriptures, make it come alive. If you're not praying that, you're likely not getting the fullness of God's text. You're missing out on a key ingredient. John 14, 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father has sent in my name, will teach you all things. 1 John 2, 27 says, As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. The Spirit is known as the Spirit of truth, and he will guide us into all truth. And, and like I said, it's not that we abandon commentaries. It's not that we abandon podcasts. It's not that we abandon books or, or stop listening to preachers or teachers. But, but we have access to the author of wisdom. We have direct access to the throne room of God that can speak deeper than any book could ever be written for you in that moment. We have access to the Spirit of God that can give you wisdom in areas that, that no man could ever possibly give you wisdom. And God's timing is better than any other person's timing. We have access to that. And we need to, we need to access that. Something revealed by the Spirit is going to sustain you much more than something that is regurgitated upon you from a preacher or a teacher or, or, or a book. When a, a baby bird is born, depending on the species, for the first three or four days of its life, the mother will regurgitate its food into the baby's mouth. Now, there's nutrients in that. There's value in that. But that is not what we have come for. I should not be the one who is spoon feeding you. Christ wants you to grow in this, so that you can design, uh, de decipher the word and, and go before the, the, the book and the scriptures and say, God, what is it that you want to teach me through this? We need to move into a deeper connection with God. And that is when Bible study becomes exciting. That, that honestly, because like when, when you come to a conclusion yourself, it, there's something that's just so exciting about it. But when someone else tells you it, it's just kind of like, mm, thanks. Or it's like, wow, thanks. But when you feel that you've had a connection with God, 
man, there's nothing more exciting and there's nothing more motivating in your devotional time than when you're connected with, the God, with God's spirit. What are you missing by reading the Bible in your own knowledge? Don't shortchange yourself a meal. God wants to reveal to us deep spiritual truths that are pertinent to where we are at in life. And in the same way that the Spirit deepens our knowledge of the Word of God, that Spirit will give you words to speak, and and, and that Spirit will give um, us wisdom to share. In verse 13, it says this, This is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. In Matthew 10, 19 and 20, Jesus says this, but when they arrest you, and he's talking to his disciples, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. How many have ever prayed a prayer, and you got done with it, and you're like, wow, that was really good. Like, that definitely wasn't me. Any, anybody been there? Or you've been in a conversation with a coworker or a family member, and they're just dumping on you something, and then out of you just comes this wisdom, and you're just like, I had no idea what to say, but I could just feel the Spirit of God just take the reins of that situation and bring like clarity and wisdom. How many have ever had that, right? Or or maybe um, you've just been in a situation where you didn't know what to pray and and the Spirit wasn't giving you actual English words, but in that moment you heard something or something happened and you just began to speak in your spiritual language and the Spirit is intercessing through you and for you. I remember when uh, Elizabeth was pregnant with Sam the first time we were at Savannah's Hope over in the, the gym and we were doing some carnival game and all of a sudden she just, you know, just passes out. And I think it's because she doesn't eat enough red meat. Um, I'm pretty sure that's, that's why. Um, but um, that's okay. I'll eat all of hers for her. Um, it's really no problem, baby. Um, but she passes out, and she kind of does this, like, gargling thing. It just kind of sounded like, yeah, what is going on here? I had no idea what to do. I had no what, idea what to say, but I just remember, you know, kind of catching her and falling to my knees, and I just began to pray in the Spirit. And, and I, I just had this peace. I just knew that God in that moment knew exactly what you needed. We went to the, the little uh, ambulance out there, and we tried to avoid a ride, which we did, um, so it wasn't expensive. And we went out there. They checked her and couldn't figure out what it was, and to this day, we have no idea what it is. But the Spirit gives us wisdom in what we need to pray. We need God to open our eyes to see and understand the depth of God's Word, but we also need God's Spirit to speak through us when we don't know what to say or how to pray. The final thing that we need to realize is that without the Spirit of God opening our eyes, we cannot know God's hidden will for our life. Verse 11 says, For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. And in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We need the Spirit of God to reveal to us what the Spirit wants for us. We can't figure that out on our own. Nobody else can tell us for us. It's not like we're going around and saying, oh, you need to do this and you need to do this. No, the Spirit of the Lord is the only one that knows your plan and your will, and you have to access that. Far too often we make decisions, hear me, we make decisions that look good on paper, but they're wrong. And we make decisions that might be the right decision, but maybe we pull the trigger too soon. Or we make decisions based upon the wisdom or even biblical wisdom, and and as the Bible says, go and preach, yet we never consult the Lord, where am I supposed to go and where am I supposed to preach? We have a responsibility to attach ourselves to Christ, to hear from the Lord, and then respond and do what he's asking us to do. We need to build a deeper relationship with this Holy Spirit so that we can know his thoughts and follow his voice. Man, I feel like I'm in this season of life where I'm really growing in this area, and I feel like I'm I'm about ready to go on this road trip, and I know the destination, but the directions haven't downloaded yet. And, and it's everything within me to, I just want to like put my, my, my nose to the ground and just start work, work, work and just get to my destination and just kind of carve out my own path, you know? And like if I didn't know where my home was, I could probably find my home just knowing that, okay, it's kind of north, it's, it's kind of west, you know? And, and I could create a way through people's backyards, but how many know that taking the interstate's a lot more efficient? 
and just waiting for the directions would get me there a lot easier. He, he, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? I, I need to remind myself daily to plug into the Holy Spirit and download the wisdom and direction from Him, not from what I think is right or what anybody else thinks is right, but from Him. I love the song Oceans and the Bridge where it says, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. See, I, I, I fear that all too often we make our decisions based upon human logic. And, and I have this hypothesis that the older you get, the harder it is to sing a song like that. Why? Because with age comes wisdom. And, and we start, and myself, I start to operate on past experiences or the wisdom that we have gained rather than operating on God's wisdom. Don't mishear me. I'm not saying that we completely uh, abandon wisdom. I'm not saying that we completely uh, ignore people speaking into our lives um, and, and that we don't use our brains. I'm not saying that at all. God gives us wisdom and, and he gives us voices of reasons. But at the end of the day, the Father knows best. And, and sometimes what God asks you to do looks pretty foolish and unwise. And, and if he's calling you to do that, he'll continue to confirm that in your heart. Can you imagine Noah's friends? Hey, Noah, what you doing? I'm building an ark. Great, what's an ark? I don't know. Why are you building it? Rain is coming. What's rain? Haven't got a clue. So you're building, I don't know. For I haven't got a clue. Yeah. Can you imagine just how foolish he looked, yet he heard from the Lord and he responded? Can you imagine how foolish Moses looked standing on the, the shore of the Red Sea with a stick in his hand and the Egyptian army behind him? What are we going to do, Moses? I don't know, but I got a stick. <laughs> how foolish did Sarah look when she was shopping in the maternity section at Walmart? Sarah, I think you're a little past your prime there, sweetie. Don't mean to burst your bubble. How, f how foolish did the Israelites looking, marching around the walls of Jericho? Anybody got a gun? <laughs> Anybody got a sledgehammer? No? Just a trumpet? How foolish did David look standing with a slingshot before a nine-foot giant? How foolish did, Dave, or did Esther look going to the king when she wasn't summoned and she could have been killed for it? How foolish did Caleb look at the age of 85 when he says, I'm not going to cash out my 401k. No. Sorry, Joshua. God promised me Hebron. I, I'm, I'm ready to fight. After all, I'm only 85, right? How foolish did Mary look to others? A pregnant virgin? Yeah, right. How foolish did the wise men look following a star, traveling thousands of miles searching for some wise king? How foolish did Peter look stepping out of a boat? How foolish did the centurions look saying, just speak the word, Jesus, and he will be healed? How foolish did the woman with the issue of blood look fighting her way through the crowd just to touch the hem of Jesus' garment? How foolish did Paul and Silas look singing songs of praise while in chains and, and imprisoned? How foolish did that small boy look standing in front of 5,000 people with his five loaves of bread and two fish? And let's not forget how foolish Jesus must have looked hanging on a cross, naked, bleeding, broken with a spear in his side and a crown of thorns on his head. This is your Messiah? This is who you call king? Some king. But we know that God's ways are higher. We know that his thoughts are higher and there is no possible way that we could come up with a better plan than God's. And we have to attach ourselves to God and live connected to the Holy Spirit and he will lead us and he'll guide us and he'll reveal to us 
God's hidden will for our life. And I believe that there are people here that have lived close to the will of God and lived close to the center of God's will. But there's something that's causing fear in your life in this moment that's holding you back. Moses tried to get off the hook. He, 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 he stutters. I, I, I can't lead them. You might be trying to get off the hook because of your age. You might be trying to get off the hook because of your fi- family's financial plan or because you just don't see it being possible and there's, there's no way or you just don't understand it. Tonight is the night that God is going to open up our eyes to his word, to his plan, and to his wisdom. And it might be scary, and it might not make a whole lot of sense, but we need to lean on God and the wisdom of God. We can't let our experience and our past experiences get in the way of our future experiences. Can I just remind you of the results of these people who trusted God? Noah and his family were saved from the flood. Moses did see the Red Sea part. Sarah did give birth to Isaac. The Israelites did see the walls of Jericho fall down. David did defeat Goliath. Esther did stop a Jewish genocide. Caleb did take Hebron. Mary did give birth to Jesus. The wise men found their king and Messiah. Peter walked on water. The centurion's servant was healed. The woman with the issue of blood was healed. Paul and Silas were set free. The little boy's lunch fed 5,000. And Jesus Christ died. And three days later, he rose from the dead. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And the same power that is in Jesus Christ lives in you. And he lives in me. And we can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives us strength because what God calls you to, he will see it through. And we don't have to live with fear and we don't have to be afraid because he's with us and he's going before you and he's paving a way. When are we going to get to the point where we take God at his word? We need our eyes to be opened. Let us not be, let us not be like the Corinthians, wise in their own eyes, Lord. But let us rely on you. Musicians, would you come? Would you all stand with me tonight? We're going to end tonight by taking a couple minutes, silencing our hearts, our minds, asking the Spirit to reveal something new to us, to illuminate something that has been hidden, that's in the darkness, God. Maybe it's in your heart, maybe it's it's a a scripture, maybe it's just a situation, but I believe the Spirit is going to speak to you. And some of you feel so hopeless right now, and just like, I don't even know what to do. You know what? I don't either. Neither does my dad, neither does Dale, neither does Georgine, neither does Harry and and, and Mavis, neither does anybody else in this room, but Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God knows exactly what you need, and he knows exactly when to do what you are called to do. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. Close your eyes all across this room. Would you just agree with me as I pray this prayer? God, open my mind, open our hearts. Open our ears so that I can hear you speak to me, God. Reveal to us something new and fresh, God. Speak to our fears, God. Speak to our doubts, Lord. May we hear straight from you, Lord. Speak to us tonight. We give you room to move and speak. Amen. We're just going to take the next minute or so. We're just going to allow God to speak to us.
So with every eye closed and head bowed, if you feel like God has spoken something to you tonight, would you just simply raise your hand so I can see, yeah, yeah. God, I thank you that you are speaking and I pray tonight that you'd continue, Lord. Sometimes you don't reveal it because your timing is perfect. So God, I pray that those who just feel like they haven't heard from you, that they're still waiting for that answer, that they would continue because strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. And so we just create room for your presence. God, may that be the prayer and the cry of our hearts, Lord. May we not be satisfied with a regurgitated word, but by your spirit, make it come alive. Would it be fresh? God, I pray for those that have just lost the sense of what you've done for them. That in this moment that they would feel so overwhelmed by the sacrifice and the love that you show us, God. Continue to speak by your spirit, Jesus. Thank you, God. We're going to leave just this altar and this time open. I invite you to come forward or stay at your pew or sit down, however you need to respond to the Lord. But we're just, we have some time, a little bit of time. And, um, if you've got a family, I'd encourage you to pray with them and for them. But band's just going to continue to, to play. They might go on another song, but let's seek God. Let's seek His Spirit. Let's be a church. Let's, let's be Pentecostal. <laughs> Let, let's hear from God and, and not rely on tradition or just what we've always done, but let's, let's hear from God and do what God is calling us to do. Amen. God bless everyone as they go their separate ways tonight, Lord. Your spirit fill them and speak to them and may you confirm it in their hearts through other people through other things lord would you just confirm whatever you're speaking in jesus name we pray amen one last thought is this god does not speak to us through doubts god never puts a doubt in someone's mind god speaks to our doubts and we need God to speak and if you're doubting things that's not necessarily God but he's speaking to the doubt so maybe there's a doubt in your mind and God's going to speak but he's not going to cause confusion he's a, he's a God of order he's a God of, of um, just peace and understanding clarity he's not going to cause confusion in your life God be with you as, as you find a place to seek.